the key things for community in Larsh and Faith and Light are two things, welcoming difference and mutuality. And I want to contrast mutuality with top-down charity. I don't know if you read Dickens, but Dickens in the 19th century wrote a novel called Bleak House. And in that novel, there is this awful, <coughs> righteous character, Mrs. Pardigle. And Mrs. Pardigle is a great charity worker, raises masses of funds for darkest Africa and all that. Um, but one of the most awful scenes in the entire book is when Mrs. Pardigle indulges in local charity. She has some things to take to a poor family down the road and off she strides with these gifts for them. And she marches in and there's the poor old father out of work and disabled and the family all around hungry and dirty and starts telling them how they should improve their lives. There is no other picture in literature of the patronizing top-down charity, I think, than that. There is no reciprocal relationship. It's doing good with no recognition that they have something to offer. I think one of the most important truths I have learnt over the years, partly through teaching for the Centre for Black and White Christian Partnership, but also in many other contexts, you give dignity to people by receiving from them. You give dignity to people by receiving from them. Everyone counts. Large assistants find that they receive from those they assist. They discover things about themselves. They discover their own weaknesses, their own vulnerability. They discover that they're loved they receive from the other, the stranger, the one who's different. They learn to slow down, to be responsive, not just efficient, and to just be and be together. I quote from Jean Vanier's book, The Broken Body. If you enter into relationship with a lonely or suffering person, you will discover something else, that it is you who are being healed. The person you thought to help will reveal to you your own hurt and the hardness of your heart and also how much you are loved. Thus the one you came to heal becomes your healer. Let me tell you two stories personal stories. I, I was in Trolley for a meeting. Uh, there was a group of theologians that met with Jean on a fairly regular basis to reflect on the meaning of L'Arche and its experience. And uh, on the Saturday evening, the meeting would break up and we would all be uh, welcome to supper and evening prayer in one of the foyers uh, around the village. And nearly always, I was sent to La Forestière, where the most disabled were in residence, people who were like my son, Arthur. And I vividly remember the evening when I was sitting in the circle, and a man with Down syndrome came and knelt at my feet and rested his arms across my knees, his chin on his arms, and gazed up into my face intently throughout the evening. At the time, we hardly had eye contact with Arthur, and I was always uncertain about how much he really responded to me, and I suddenly realized that this man was giving me 
what my own son couldn't. His name was Christoph, which means Christ bearer. Jean Vanier once said that Arthur was my gateway to God. Certainly for many, many years I have said that it is through Arthur that I have experienced the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, I'm running out, oh dear, it ends with self-control. I once heard somebody say, if you can recite the list, you're halfway there, so clearly... <laughs> I have many times spoken of how my Arthur has ministered to me. That I come in from being hassled by student problems and suddenly just having to do the simple essential things for him brought me down to the basics of what it means to be human. Compassion. It isn't pity, that's too top-down. It isn't top-down caring, being in control. Nor, I think, is it simply empathy. That's a start, feeling a sense of identity, identifying with people who are different. Compassion, I suggest, is a sharing. It's a belonging to one another. Com passion, sim pathy. The com is Latin for with, sim is Greek for with, and the rest of both of those words means suffering, but suffering doesn't necessarily mean something extreme, it means sort of responding, being affected by. So those words are about sharing, sharing. You know, in the big debates about um, euthanasia and all that, so many people have this feeling, I don't want to be a burden. I was reading a book a little while ago by a medical doctor who challenged that. He said, maybe we should want to be a burden. Because actually, <clears throat> accepting care with a good grace and having compassion on the carer, which may be where we'll all end up, that enables the receiving from one another, receiving the gifts of solidarity, compassionate community, of mutuality. From the first meeting of theologians at L'Arche, some wise sayings emerged. Community means you never suffer alone. But what is really human is the capacity to ask for help, and that is the gift of the unlikely givers. 